Okay. All right. So is everybody ready before I officially start? And I'll, I'll cut this beginning part too. Don't worry. Yeah, of course. Okay. You can smell too. Ready? Okay. All right. Good afternoon. Welcome everybody to our premiere episode of Briarwood Kids Ask. My name is Dan Buck. I am the director of lower school at the Briarwood School in Houston, Texas. And this show is all about kids asking experts what they want to know about dyslexia, dyscalculia, and the like. So I've brought two very, very important people here to talk to each other. First one I'd like to introduce is Wesley. Hi, everybody. Wesley, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? I'm very interested in movie directors. I'm very interested in movies and comic books and video games. Okay, very cool. And I'm now going to introduce Dr. Tiffany Hogan. Dr. Hogan is a PhD. She's a professor in the Department of Communication Services and Disorders at MGH Institute of Health Professions in Boston. The director of the Speech and Language SAIL, is it SAIL? Yes. Perfect. SAIL Literacy Lab and Research Associate at Harvard University. Dr. Hogan has published over 100 papers on the genetic, neurologic, and behavioral links between oral and written language development with a focus on improving assessment and intervention for children and developmental language disorder, dyslexia, and or speech sound disorders. Her advocacy for children with reading difficulties has led her to co-found a DLD informational website, www.dldandme.org, host the podcast, See, Hear, Speak podcast, and contribute information for articles in numerous news outlets, including the New York Times, the Boston Globe, along with several television and radio appearances. Thank you so much, Dr. Hogan, for joining us today. We're so excited. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. Okay, without further ado, I'm now going to set you guys up for your conversation. One moment here. Okay. Are you all ready? Okay. Question number one is, what is dyslexia? Great question. Dyslexia is a brain difference that occurs in people that makes it difficult to learn how to connect letters and sounds together. I have a question. Question number two. How can you tell if a child has dyslexia? A child has dyslexia. The hallmark, I'll just say this. The, what we really look for when a child has dyslexia is difficulty reading words. So if they've had some instruction in how to connect letters and sounds and read words, and we find that it's more difficult for them to do that than their peers who've had similar instruction, then we have an indication that they have dyslexia. Then what we do is we test them further to look at how they process letters and sounds and how they put letters and sounds together. Great. When you got that, oh yeah, I asked a question. Do you have dyslexia? I do not have dyslexia. Okay. Does any of your family members have dyslexia? I do think that some might have dyslexia and um, the way, yes, I'll just say yes to that question. Okay. If one of your family members got diagnosed with dyslexia, did people treat treats them differently? Yes, that is a real problem. When, um, I, went, when I was at my old school, they treat me differently. They started talking to me slowly. Like it was like two plus two. Do you understand? Mm. Mm. Yeah, that can be frustrating. I think that uh, what we worry about is having lower expectations. So if someone hears that you have dyslexia, they may think that you don't understand. Like you said, they may speak slower or they may have different expectations and think that you can't learn as well. But what we know from the science is that children and adults with dyslexia can learn how to read and that they have unique brain processing, which can give them other strengths as well. Mm -hmm. Do you have to go to, I mean, did any of your family members have to go to a special school for, because they had dyslexia? So uh, one of my family members has gone to intensive training and tutoring. So they see a speech language pathologist who also trains in reading two times a week. And then do, they do um, extra training on the computer and extra services at school. Last year, I averaged that 
my uh, child had received about eight hours of extra instruction for reading difficulty and dyslexia. So it was a lot of extra work. Mm -hmm. What are some things that people don't understand about dyslexia? Mm. There's a lot of things that people don't understand about dyslexia. One of the biggest misunderstandings is that persons with dyslexia see letters backwards. But what we know is it's more about how letters and sounds are connected in a special area of the brain called the visual word form area. And it makes it very difficult to make those connections. And those connections are what is so important for word reading. Another thing that I see as a big misunderstanding is that people can believe that persons with dyslexia are not of average or high intelligence. And we know that dyslexia has nothing to do with how well you can learn. It's just a different way of learning. Hmm. Good to know. What age were, what age were your family members diagnosed with dyslexia? Well, the earlier, the better, but unfortunately, sometimes it's later. So I've been working with a lot of parents and educators to make sure that we do screening or early testing for dyslexia because dyslexia risk um, can be detected quite early if you use the right assessments. So we can detect as early as kindergarten if we have the right assessments and the earlier, the better, because then you can get the early intervention and support that you need to learn how to read words. Hmm. What is a common age to get diagnosed with dyslexia? Common age? Is yeah, common age. Common age. Well, unfortunately, at this time, the most common age is too late. So it can be, you know, later, like the common age is probably around 10, 8 to 10. But um, unfortunately, a lot of children are even later than that. So they struggle and they don't understand that they have a unique brain that you needs some different types of instruction. How does dyslexia affect your family member? Hmm. Well, I think the hardest part is um, seeing the self-esteem go down because then seeing that uh, he feels that he can't learn, but really it's just a different way of learning and he needs some extra support for learning. So when I hear things like, oh, I'm stupid or I can't learn or I don't like school, that really makes me sad because it's not that he is he's definitely not stupid and he definitely, you know, um, can learn, but it makes me sad that that's not realized as much and that his unique learning needs aren't always addressed. Do you have, do you have any special tricks that help you with your family member that has sexia? Oh, that's a tough question. Special tricks. Well, one thing that we do a lot of is we do um, listening to books or so that we don't have to um, be limited by word reading. So when he's having difficulty, for instance, reading a book, we do some practice, but then I also will read the book too so that we can take turns. So it's not all on him to do the reading. So we do a lot of listening to books so that we can hear the book. And that's what we want to do is hear the story and listen to it and enjoy it. The other thing, I, I don't know if it's a trick, but I definitely make sure that he knows that he can learn and that he's doing a really good job because his brain to learn how to read takes a lot more time and effort than another child, but it can seem like he's maybe not putting the effort out because it's in the brain. So you can't really see it. So I really do a lot of encouragement and say, good job. You're working so, so hard. Mm -hmm. Okay, question number 10, our last question. What would you tell a child that just got diagnosed with dyslexia to encourage them? Well, first off, I would say you're not alone. At least one in 10 children have dyslexia. It is a unique brain, a new, unique way to process letters and sounds. It can seem really hard at first, but there's also a lot of cool things about having dyslexia, that you get to see the world in a slightly different way. And you also get to understand how sometimes things are hard, but you can do hard things. Well, number 10 was your last question, sadly. 
Okay. Thank you, Wesley. It was great. I've been interviewed by a lot of people and those were some really tough and great questions. I really enjoyed talking to you. You did a great job. Enjoyed talking to you too. Thank you very much for both of you for spending some time with us here on Briarwood Kids Ask. And I uh, hope to see you next time, episode two, next month. Thank you very much. Yay, thank you.